Hello and welcome to I Am Organic Gardening. My name is Mark and I'm here standing in my backyard garden on my 22 acre organic farm. Now today I've got some great news for you. What happens to all that leaf mold or straw or hay or wood chips that disappears every year? Where does it all go to? Well, I have a great answer for you. And once you understand this answer, you'll be able to successfully garden in your own backyard or in pots and containers, and you'll have a fun time doing it also. So let's get into it. Here's a great picture of my backyard garden. And now it's about 100 feet wide and about 150 feet long. And it's all covered pretty much in leaf mold or leaves from fall last year. Now I'm gonna to explain to you what is gonna to happen to this. And that's why I'm doing this video now. All this leaf mold is gonna go away eventually. I would say in the next four months, depending on the weather. And you can see how thick it is. And I'll get a better close up for you. It's anywhere from seven to almost 12 inches thick on the whole garden. Garden, but this is all going to disappear. Where is it going to all go to? And this is fascinating because what it is, is going to help you with your soil and also understanding soil is going to give you better and nutrient dense food in the future. Here we are looking at these beautiful fall leaves already. Now we're going to dig down here. I'm going to show you. See how much it's decaying already? That's what it does over winter. And you can see this is pretty much even worm castings in here because there's an abundance of worms very deep down here. I'm going to say this is about, I'm not going to be able to get a good picture of this because it's so deep. Now, what is happening here, and this is my soil below. Let's see if we can get a shot of that. There we go. That's what happens. But why did this beautiful leaf mold help this soil so much? Is because of bacteria and fungi. Now, what's nice about this is that it's going to even get richer and darker over time. So now I'm going to explain to you something that I find totally fascinating. Here's our two beautiful things that we want in our soil all the time, bacteria and fungi, and we want it to a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, a lot of people say you want it a little bit less or a little bit more bacteria for vegetable plants in your soil, but just on a very common, basic, general information, we want a one-to-one -one ratio. So, what happens to all that beautiful leaf mold? Where does it all go to? So when the bacteria starts eating any type of mulch that's in your garden, where does it go to? I'll show you. 80% of it goes back up in the atmosphere. That's right, that beautiful sky that we look at all the time. It's filled with carbon dioxide. So when bacteria eats any type of organic matter, 80% of it goes back up into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. Now here's some good news. Now what happens when fungi eats our garden mulch all the time? Well guess what? 80% of it goes right back into the soil again. Yes, right back into the soil. Because what it does is this. So you see all that beautiful fungi strands there? That's called hyphae. Now inside those strands, that looks like all a little bit like cotton strings or any type of strings, that carbon that's inside the leaf mold is actually taken and is, is ingested inside the fungal hyphae itself. 80% of it goes back into that hyphae and stays in the ground instead of 80% going with bacteria up in the air. So now, isn't that cool? That's what gives you that rich, dark soil all the time. That's amazing. So 80% of anything that's fungal eating things like your cardboard, your wood chips, your leaves, uh, what else is there, uh, newspaper, uh, straw, that type of thing, all this here is actually going back in your ground inside that fungal hyphae, 80% of it. So you're not uh, losing all that mulch. Only time you're losing the mulch is when bacteria eats it. So we want that fungal dominated soil to some extent, or at least equal to make sure that we get it back in our soil. So how do we do that? It's simple. We want to just cover our plants up with something that's fungal, food for that and i'll give you a list of things that are fungal foods for compost and also for your garden
There's a nice list and it'll also be posted on my Facebook page so you can take a closer look at it and also print it out for your own records. Now on the right hand side we have C where it says food for bacteria, then bacteria once again, and also fungi. So any here, anything that's in here, wood chips, straw, coconut husks, dry leaves, paper, etc., cardboard. It's getting a little windy out here, sorry for that. And now the other things that are for bacteria are on top or something like that. Just like your green plants, your, um, let's say, anything that's a uh, legume plant that's green or uh, anything that you see here, even coffee grounds is bacteria, but it's right pretty much on the borderline. That will be eaten very quickly by the bacteria and also release that back up in the atmosphere. We have a cover crop or winter rye, and this is, goes for pretty much any type of cover crop because what it is, once we terminate that, that's green material, that's going to pretty much be eaten by bacteria on top of the soil. Now, the best part about cover cropping is that the roots that are in the ground never turn green. So that is actually a fungi material. That's going to take a little bit longer to decompose. But also, which is nice about that, that's how plants feed the soil. A living root in the ground will also feed the soil, but when also it dies, it's a pretty much a fungal bacteria soil because it's deep in the soil and that's pretty much uh, dominated by fungi processes in the soil. And this is what I'm talking about. Now, whenever you terminate something and that roots in the ground, here's an old tomato plant that probably grew about five or six feet last year. Now, stem I should say. Now, we're just going to pull this out. Now you can see there's nothing left of it. There's no small roots except there at the top. Everything is decaying because it's coming from that fungi and bacteria that's in your soil and decomposing it. Now that fungi is actually doing a better job in removing and making this perfect. So easily it is to plant again in that area and you don't have to worry about roots. So the whole process of getting that bacteria and fungi at a good to one ratio, at a one to one ratio, is just this sample. You have nothing left to your root system in your ground. If you do not see this, then you just have to increase the fungi and bacteria in your soil, which I'll go over in another video. And basically it's just using compost tea and getting those microbes back up to a good level again. I went over a lot of information. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to answer all your questions. And if I need to make a second video, I will, so look out for that because I want you to understand this because it just makes your soil so rich and that carbon in the soil is actually a food bank for all the things that you need. It's also like an immune system that helps your plants to be healthier in the future. So thank you again for watching. Give it a thumbs up and I'll talk to you again shortly and happy gardening.